go. The computer has become such a basic necessity nowadays. I wonder what life would have been without computers. Yes, Reni. It has become almost a basic necessity in our daily life. But there was a time when there was no computers. I know. It is a modern invention. Can you tell me how it all began? Well, it is a long story. The term computer is derived from the word compute, which means to calculate. Computers are versatile calculating machines that can handle different tasks at the same time. To know about the history of computers, we have to go back to the days when people used the abacus to calculate complex sums. The abacus? Do you mean the abacus that we have used during our kindergarten days? Yes, Renny. The instrument that you used to calculate sums during the first day at school. The abacus is probably the first counting device. It was invented about 5,000 years ago in China. Tell me more about the abacus. The abacus was the first mechanical device for calculation which could also perform arithmetical calculations. Do you remember what an abacus looked like, Rennie? Yes, it is made of a wooden frame with rods, each having beads. That's right. Counting on the abacus can be done by sliding these beads across the rods. The rods are divided into two parts. The upper part was known as heaven and the lower part was known as earth. Let us now discuss about the Pascaline. The Pascaline? What is it, Tico? The Pascaline is the first mechanical calculator in the world. Why is it called Pascaline? The Pascaline was invented by a French mathematician called Louis Pascal in 1642 and so it is named after him. How does it work? The device is made up of wheels and gears. It could handle decimal values by rotating a wheel from 1 to 9 steps. It is used for adding numbers quickly. The meters used in taxis nowadays are an example of Pascaline. Do you know who is called the father of the computer? No, Clico. Charles Babbage is known as the father of the computer. Who was Charles Babbage? Charles Babbage was a British mathematician who designed the analytical engine in 1833. Charles Babbage is the person who introduced the idea of storing and reading the information before processing. All modern computers are based on this concept. The analytical engine? The analytical engine is an engine powered by a huge steam engine. It can handle a large amount of data and process them at high speed. Let us now discuss about the tabulating machine. The tabulating machine? Yes, in 1890, Herman Hollerith, an American statistician, invented a machine called the tabulating machine. What does that machine do? The tabulating machine is capable of reading data, processing it and giving the desired output. It is based on IPO or input, processing and output cycle. This machine is capable of reading both numbers and letters. Let me now tell you about ENIAC and UNIVAC. What are these, Clico? ENIAC stands for Electronic Numerical Integrator and Calculator. This machine was designed in 1946 
by two American scientists called John W. Mosley and John Presper Eckert. How was the ENIAC different from the earlier machines? Unlike the earlier machine, the ENIAC used decimal digits instead of binary digits. The ENIAC was the first high-speed electronic digital computer or EDC. What about the UNIVAC? In 1951, Moshley and Eckert developed the UNIVAC 1. It stands for Universal Automatic Computer. The UNIVAC was the first commercial electronic computer. It could work with both numerical and textual data. Let us now learn how the modern computer developed generation by generation. Rennie, do you know what first generation computers are? Hmm, no idea. The computers that were developed during the period of 1941 to 1956 are called first generation computers. One of the earliest computer is the Colossus. It was used by the British code breakers during the Second World War to decode enemy messages. The first generation computers were very large and expensive as they used vacuum tubes and magnetic drums. The first generation computers also consumed a huge amount of electricity. The ENIAC and UNIVAC are two examples of first generation computers. During the first generation computers, machine language was used. Let us now learn about the second generation computers. These are the computers that were developed during the period from 1956 to 1963. What is the difference between the first generation and the second generation computers? The second generation computers used two transistors instead of vacuum tubes. As transistors are smaller than vacuum tubes, the computers become much smaller in size. They also become faster and cheaper. The advantages of second generation computers were they consume lesser power than the first generation computers. Programming can be done on these computers. These computers were mainly used in the atomic energy industry. IBM 7000, IBM 650 and Atlas are some of the second generation computers. The second generation computers used both machine language and assembly language. The period from 1964 to 1971 is the period of the third generation computers. During this period, integrated circuits of ICS and smaller transistors were developed and they were placed on silicon chips called semiconductors. The features help to increase the speed of the computer. The third generation computers can run different programs at the same time and the common man can now use computers. IBM 1130, Univac 1107 are examples of third generation computers. These computers used high-level programming languages. Are the computers that we use today the third generation computers? No, Rennie. Today, we use fourth generation computers. The computers that are being developed from 1971 till the present time are called the fourth generation computers. The fourth generation computers use microchips. 0 and 1 were coded to do arithmetical operations. They are called binary numbers. The fourth generation computers are fast and efficient and so widely in use. The computer on your table is a fourth generation computer. The mouse and joysticks were developed during the stage. 
fourth generation computers can be interlinked together in a network. This led to the development of the internet. IBM 4341, DEC 10 and STAR 1000 are some of the examples of the fourth generation computers. Fourth generation computers used high level programming languages. Are there any further development of computers? Yes, Renny. The fifth generation computers are currently under development. They are called supercomputers. Why are they called supercomputers? Because they have high storage capacity, speed and efficiency. A supercomputer has many CPUs connected together and can carry out large number of scientific operations in a very short interval of time. Scientists are now trying to develop supercomputers in a way that they can think on their own. This is called artificial intelligence. Robots work on this technology. So, Renny, this was the history of the modern computer. Thank you, Clico. Now I know so much.